Laurie Vitale and on this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen we're going to make an Italian classic. We're making cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe is a very classic dish made up of very two main components, right? Cacio and pepe, cheese and pepper. Um, there are many variations of this recipe. If you go to Rome, I feel like this is sort of how you're going to get it. Very creamy, very minimal ingredients. The key is all in the technique. You're going to get a very luxu like luxurious creamy sauce with no ounce of butter, no ounce of cream. I cannot wait to show you, but like I said, keep in mind there are many variations of it. Like in my cookbook, there's a much easier variation with a little bit of butter and a combination of cheese between pecorino and parmigiano for those of you that don't love the sharpness of pecorino. In this case, I'm trying to go as classic as possible with lots of finely shredded pecorino. Please make sure you buy a good imported pecorino romano. Do not buy a uh, pre-shredded. It will not work. It will clump and be a mess. You need lots of black pepper. I, you can actually obviously grind this up. What I did was I just put whole peppercorns in my spice grinder and I just basically grounded it up until it was semi-powdery, but there's still a little bit left over. You want freshly ground pepper for this. You do not want the store-bought pre-ground pepper pepper, it will not taste the same. Then you need your spaghetti. You can also use bucatini. Um, I use a thicker spaghetti for this. And then you need some salt. So, pot boiling water. This recipe comes together really quickly, but you just got to pay attention, okay? Lots of salt. This is the only time we are seasoning the pasta itself. There is no salt in the sauce because the sauce is made from the starchy cooking water and your spaghetti, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some tongs and I'm going to cook the spaghetti uh, a couple minutes shy of what the package instructions say. So if the package instruction says 11 minutes, I'm gonna cook it for nine minutes. I'm gonna put this on my back burner because I don't have enough space here to do both. Um, once the spaghetti is ready, we will make the sauce because it comes together really fast and I need the spaghetti to make the sauce. So let's get it going. The pasta has about one more minute to go, so what I've been doing is in a large nonstick scale, it doesn't have to be nonstick by the way, but I just think it's easier to clean. Um, I've got about a teaspoon and a quarter of that ground black pepper and I'm letting that toast really nicely in there. Now, I took out some of the starchy cooking water from the pasta, I need to use some of it to add it to my cheese. This is one of the key elements to making a really creamy version of this dish. You're gonna add a bit in there because what you're trying to do is you're trying to create uh, a cream, basically, with your cheese. And in terms of the ratio, I do one ounce of cheese for two ounces of pasta. So in total, I had about four ounces of pecorino romano that I grated myself to eight ounces of pasta. That's always the ratio. So you don't really need a recipe for this. It's kind of like you add as much as you want, uh, but this is what you're looking for. So basically you're tempering that cheese so that when you add it to your pasta, it doesn't all clump up into one big mess. It's gonna be fabulous. So I've got the rest of the water here, which I will need. I'm gonna go ahead and drain my pasta, bring it back here, and then uh, we pull it all together. I'm gonna add some of the starchy water to your pepper. You're then gonna go ahead with your drained pasta. It's gonna look odd, but you're gonna have to just honestly trust the process, okay? This, this whole thing is as wonderful as it is because you got it just, it comes together if you just give it time to, okay? Once you bring this back up to a boil like it is right now, what you're going to do is you're going to slowly start adding your cheese cream, okay? And you're gonna just mix that in and watch what happens. Watch, it'll clump for just a second and then it, as it bubbles, as it bubbles, it'll start to melt. All that cheese will start to melt. What we don't want are clumps. What we, don't, what we want is that. You see how that forming right there with no clumps? You see how when the clumps start melting, you get that creaminess right there? That's what we want. So slowly, you're gonna add your cheese cream. I am telling you, this is magical. I am telling you, if you want the most luxurious cash pepe of your entire life, you gotta make it this way. You have to pay attention to it. This is not the time to answer phone calls. This is not the time to walk away because you have to move the pan. You gotta move the cheese because there's a distinct difference between burning the cheese and melting the cheese. 
What we don't want to do is burn it into chunks. What we want to do is melt it. You see how it's melting? Well, keep going and you will not see any clumps. You'll see just the creamiest, most beautiful plate of pasta you've ever put in your mouth, okay? I told you in the beginning of the video, this recipe is very simple, requires very few ingredients. It's just all in the technique. So I'm literally going to continue to do this. And once all the cheese is in and it's melted, we serve. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. This is all I'm going to do. I'm going to add the rest of it and just let it keep going. Oh, we are nearly there. The cheese is almost fully melted. But you see how you got to just keep it moving? Look at how creamy that is. I mean, if you've got just a couple little clumps of cheese, it's okay. Just don't burn it. But you see that? I mean, that is no clump. That is, that is no clump, okay? Because what we want is that. What we want is right here. If you can just see right here, smoothness, creaminess, just absolute perfection. And that just takes time. It takes you having to work with it. It takes making sure it's not or you know too high of heat because you don't want to burn it. You know, all that jazz because that makes a difference. When it comes to something this simple and easy, it's all in the technique. I mean, that is creamy. Honestly, that is the best kosher paper you'll ever have in your whole life. I like it smooth. I like it creamy. I like it velvety. Mm. Mamma mia, that's not incredible. Wow. I will have the recipe written for you on the website. I'm going to dive into that skillet. <laughs> it is a must make. If you're a fan of kashri pepe, it's a must make. I mean, look at this. You know you want to dive into that pool of creamy, cheesy goodness, okay? Laura right, in the kitchen on camp with the recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. Make yourself the best kashri pepe you've ever had in your life. I will bet my reputation on it. Thank you.